If you're tired of having to get all the way up into your boat just to raise up your outdrive on the boat ramp, then you're in the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install a remote trim switch on the back of your boat. It's as easy as that. So before we jump into the details of this video, I do want to give a shout out to Jared over at Mad Props Boatworks. He actually has a video of him installing a remote trim switch, which is what inspired me to make this video of me installing mine. So I'll leave a link in the description to his video if you guys want to check it out. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. Now our man Jared at Mad Props Boatworks made this freaking amazing wiring diagram. And this was a huge help for me figuring out how to do this. So I'm sharing it with you guys right off the bat. So now let's talk about supplies. I found a beefy single pole dual throw rocker switch and then some 12 gauge wire. And to connect the wires we needed some female spade terminals and some ring terminals. I was able to find these in a variety pack on Amazon. And as always, all the links to these products are in the description below. Now that I've got my rocker switch in hand, I can go ahead and cut out the hole for it on the boat. I started by tracing the shape of the switch onto the boat, and then I used a variety of tools to cut the hole out. I do want to say trying to use a jigsaw for this is a terrible choice. In hindsight, I think it would have been much easier to use an end mill bit like Jared did. With the hole cut out, now we're ready to work on the wiring. The first thing I did was estimate how long I needed to make the wires to reach from the trim pump back to where the switch would be. And about two feet would give me more than enough length to work with, so I went ahead and cut the wires to that length. I do want to mention this is my absolute favorite wiring tool because it can pull the shielding off the end of the wire so easily. So if any of you are wanting to get one for yourself, I'll go ahead and leave an Amazon link to it down below. At this point I finished cutting all three wires and removing the shielding from the ends. Then I bust out those spade terminals and crimp them on to one end of each wire that will connect to the switch. And on the other end, we'll crimp on a ring terminal to connect it to the solenoid studs and the battery positive. One cool thing I like about the new wire terminals is that the insulation on them shrinks whenever you hit it with some heat and that makes a real nice airtight seal. Now for installing. First thing you're going to want to do is unplug the positive side of your battery. And then you're going to want to unscrew this black cover with the warning sign on it. And with the cover off you can see why you'd want to unplug your battery first. All it takes is your metal wrench or socket to touch either pair of solenoid studs together to power the trim pump. And I found this out for myself and sparks did indeed fly. But at this point, you should be able to tell from looking at your trim pump where the wires go based on the diagram Jared made. So here is what my trim pump looked like after I got my wires all hooked up to it. And as you can see, it is kind of hard to see where each wire is going because everything's packed in there so tightly. 
And here's what the wiring going to the switch looked like. Because I only had red and black wire, I did go ahead and use some colored tape to mark which ones were going to the blue and green wires to the pump. And you might also notice I have a fourth wire on my switch and that one's actually going to the battery negative or the ground and that's what allows the LED lights to be powered for my switch. But that is pretty much all there is to installing one. Now if you aren't already convinced or you want more details, that's what I'm going to go over now. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is one of the big reasons why I wanted this remote trim switch. And it's simply for the fact that it bypasses those solenoids for powering the trim motor. The power goes straight through the switch itself, straight to the motor. So if any of you have been on the boat ramp before, and you've been at your throttle, and you're pushing the trim up, but it's not going up, odds are one of those solenoids might be bad, and diagnosing that at the boat ramp is going to cost you minutes that you don't have in the heat of the moment. So with the switch, you'd be able to bypass that and just use the switch on the back, which would still work just fine, assuming everything else is okay. So that's one thing I really like about it. So that brings us to the next topic, which is how do you know which switch to buy? And for this application, you're going to want what's called an SPDT switch, single pole dual throw. What on earth does that mean? I had no idea when I was first looking. Basically what that means is you've got a single power line coming in. That's the single pole. And then the dual throw is you can take that one power input and you can throw it to one of two different outputs, which is effectively what we're trying to do here. So the next thing to consider is because we actually have the full power of the motor going through the switch itself, we want to find a switch that's rated for a good amount of current to flow through it. And the one I found is rated for 20 amps at 12 volts. And that seems to be a pretty good amount. And with considering how much current is going through the switch, we also have to consider the wire size that's going to be carrying that current from the switch to the motor. So you saw I got 12 gauge wire. This is, seems to be working out good for me. I haven't melted any wires yet, but you might even want to go even thicker up to 10 gauge wire. I saw that's what Jared used in his video. But 12 gauge should be enough for most of us because again, heat builds up in the wire over time and we're not running the motor for very long, so it doesn't give it a chance to really build up that much heat. And with that, those are all the big details I can think of off the top of my head. If I missed anything, be sure to drop a comment down below letting me know. And I do want to say if you guys appreciated Jared's wiring diagram, let him know down in the comments below. I think it's really an awesome diagram and really did help out a lot. So be sure to let him know if you guys appreciated it. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see all the future videos coming out, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. But that is it for today's video. I just want to say thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.